evening. A back-to-work agreement has been reached to end the two-day strike of workers at the National Water Commission. Here is Colleen May with the details. Granville Valentine, General Secretary at the National Workers' Union of Jamaica, informed her new center that a back-to-work agreement has been reached to end the two-day strike of National Water Commission NWC workers and that some staff will resume work as of tonight. Out of this with um, a good agreement, um, we, there's a back-to-work order in place for the workers to return and the night shift we are trying to find some workers who, who could have returned as early as possible in the interest of the of the nation and um, the persons who may be uh, at this time not having water and we really apologize for that inconvenience though it wasn't our, our fault the agreement basically will um, satisfy the needs the immediate needs and the 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 the, the, the previous agreement that we had uh, we hope conscious that um, in moving forward that the situation that arised um, over uh, this compensation will not um, return. Um, we are happy that we could have had this agreement uh, and no further um, protests has to, had to take place. Mr. Valentine said that the union will ensure all agreements made in writing are upheld. Well, both has been both has been amicably resolved um, in writing, and what we need to know do is to ensure that those are implemented. There, are, there, are, there is documentation signed under the purview of the Ministry of Labour and, um, with all the parties, including finance. So it's a different approach now and it's a different documentation this we we, we deem to be a, a legal document and we can take it anywhere so and i trust i trust i trust that based on the people and the parties that were involved in good faith they will ensure that it happened we as a watchdog and the representative of our workers must ensure that um as per documentation and agreement uh, we pursue um in accordance with same Thousands of Jamaicans were left without water, while several schools and health facilities had to be closed this morning due to a lack of water. The strike action by some 2,000 NWC workers caused the major disruptions in the country's water supply system much of yesterday and today. Yesterday, the employees went on strike, demanding a response from the Minister of Finance and the Public Service on their request for a reclassification of their services. Reporting for Melo T TV News. I'm Colleen May. Thank you, Colleen. Meanwhile, the National Water Commission, NWC, is advising customers that it has resumed its operations with immediate effect. In a release a short while ago, the NWC said, with the employees returning to work, it will resume the provision of water and sewerage services to thousands of Jamaicans who had been negatively impacted by the industrial action. In the meantime, Prime Minister Andrew Holness earlier today appealed to NWC's workers to return to work. Mr. Holness, while noting that the concerns raised by employees of the National Water Commission are valid and are receiving the government's keen attention, appealed for the full contingent of workers and leadership to return to the job. To the workers, and leadership of the NWC to return to work and to get back to manning our water stations and returning water, this essential commodity, to our citizens, to our businesses, to our schools, hospitals, and all our endeavors in making Jamaica a place that is growing, that is prosperous. Uh, we do understand and believe that there are valid concerns by the workers and staff of the NWC. We do understand that there may be issues of trust and confidence involved in the relationship 
uh, between the workers and the government. Now, Mr. Holness stated that given current negotiations, it is in the critical interest of everyone that water supply be returned. But we acknowledge that at some point, the workers would have to get the attention of the government. And I believe that the attention has been gotten. We are in negotiations. We have been in negotiations since yesterday. Having that now being established, that we are negotiating, we are discussing and coming to conclusion and hopefully solutions, that it would be in the interest of all that the water supply is returned. In other words, uh, now that we are at the table, we are discussing uh, there is no need for the public to continue to suffer. Right now as we speak, I'm getting several calls from businesses, from schools, from hospitals, that they are at serious risk. Uh, hotels have been saying that they're trying to relocate guests into other areas where water supply is available. Um, many of them, their backup supplies are running low. Mr. Holness noted that while the experiences of the workers are not ideal, it would be a tragedy to jeopardize everything at this crucial point. Jamaica is one boat. And if there is a hole in the boat, we are all at risk of sinking. I think that has to be the consideration for every Jamaican. Yes, your particular situation might be different, probably worse than others. But it makes no sense to jeopardize everything else. We are right at the cusp of taking off as a country. We consider water to be an essential commodity. We consider it to be an essential service. In the order of things, we must establish that this is the case. So I've asked the Attorney General to advise the government on the position uh, as to whether or not the NWC uh, is an essential service and how those workers would be classified. I just need to know and understand that. Um, it is the belief that we have, but we want to just confirm it from a legal point of view. So establish that, then we will know how to proceed uh, in this regard. Mr. Holness also said that as Jamaica celebrates 60 years of independence, all Jamaicans should consider the fact that there has always been an antagonistic relationship between labor and employers and that this history should not define our future. The history of our country, as we look at celebrating our 60th year of independence is that there has always been an antagonistic relationship with labor and employers. It is defined in the 1930s. It is a part of how independent Jamaica evolved. But that past does not have to define our future. And indeed, we have made great progress in our industrial relations. And I stand here and I would like to commend the unions for having displayed great enlightenment and understanding 
and in particular in the last decade when we managed to form greater partnership and alliance in coming to the fiscal rescue of the country. So I was a little bit concerned when an industrial action is taken and there was no notice given so that we could put measures in ameliorate the effects of such actions. We're a little bit concerned. As we continue with the news tonight, the St. Catherine South Police have listed 11 individuals as persons of interest. The police believe these persons can assist with ongoing investigations into recent incidents in the division. They are Omar Manderson, otherwise called Crumbs, Imar McKenzie, otherwise called Munga, Kirk Wint, otherwise called Big Red, Ricardo Carson, otherwise called Trooper, Shane Williams, otherwise called Gaza Tussain, Elijah Carless, otherwise called Papaloo, Kevin Gibbons, otherwise called Black Boy, O'Neill Linde, otherwise called Knockers, Robert McCray, otherwise called Raza, Kishan Bent, otherwise called Tissant, and a man known only as Teacher. These persons, or anyone knowing their whereabouts, are being asked to contact the Greater Portmore Police at 876-989-8422, Police Emergency 119, Crime Stop at 311, or the nearest police station. Still tonight, detectives from the St. Elizabeth Police Division have named one man as wanted in relation to the fatal shooting of 19-year-old Romario Barnes, otherwise called Bududup of Red Bank District Junction in the parish. Wanted is 27-year-old Alex MacDonald of Bull Savannah District, St. Elizabeth. Reports from the Junction Police coming into our news center are that at approximately 7.30 p.m. on Thursday, November 11, 2021, Barnes and MacDonald were at Water Lane Junction in the parish when an altercation developed. MacDonald left and returned with a firearm and opened gunfire hitting Barnes in the head. The police were summoned and Barnes was transported to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Alex MacDonald is being asked to contact the Black River Criminal Investigations Branch. Additionally, anyone knowing his whereabouts is being asked to contact the Black River Criminal Investigations Branch at 876-965-2232. Police Emergency 119 or the nearest police station. As we continue with the news tonight, one Intratech 9mm Luger submachine gun with a magazine containing three 9mm cartridges was seized by the police during an operation in Haywood Hall District, St. Mary, on Monday. Now reports coming in to our news center are that the police were conducting operations in the area when the driver of a white Mazda motor car was signaled to stop. The driver disobeyed and a man jumped from the vehicle with a shopping bag in hand. The man managed to elude the police. However, the shopping bag was found in bushes with the firearm and ammunition on the inside. No arrest was made in connection with the seizure. Investigations continue. Still making Mellow TV news, 34-year-old Brian Davis, otherwise called Hickey of St. Raphael Road, Rockfort, Kingston, was arrested and charged for arson that occurred in his community on Monday. Reports from the Ellison Road Police coming into our news center tonight are that Davis and the occupants of the premises had a dispute during which Davis threatened several times that he was going to set fire to the premises. On Monday, the residents were asleep when they were awakened by smoke and fire coming from houses inside the yard. Davis was seen running from the premises. An alarm was raised and the occupants ran out of the yard to safety. The police and fire department were called and upon their arrival, the houses were seen engulfed in flames. The fire destroyed the houses and their contents. The damage is estimated at 11 million Jamaican dollars. Davis was later arrested and charged for arson. His court date is not yet finalized. 
Still tonight, the popular Little Ochi seafood restaurant in Manchester has been ordered closed by the Manchester Health Department. The decision came into effect on May 3, 2022 and was reportedly the result of breaches of the Public Health Act and its regulations. Details of said breaches were not disclosed. We will bring you more on this story in subsequent newscasts. And we turn our attention now to tonight's COVID-19 update where Jamaica yesterday reported 110 new cases of COVID-19 as well as five virus-related deaths. Now this increases the total of cases recorded on the island since the start of the pandemic to 131,544 and the death toll now to 2,987. According to the latest statistics from the Ministry of Health and Wellness, the country also recorded 106 new recoveries, increasing the total of recovered persons now to 84,709. Now, of the newly reported cases, there were 74 females and 36 males, ranging in age from one day to 108 years, and 1,454 confirmed active cases on the island. In tonight's parish update, Kingston and St. Andrew recorded 27 cases. St. James recorded 28 cases. St. Anne, 13 cases. St. Catherine recorded 8 cases. West Merland recorded 21 cases. Hanover, 6 cases. St. Elizabeth recorded 1 case. St. Mary recorded 3 cases. Clarendon recorded 2 cases. And Manchester recorded 1 case. Meanwhile, the latest fatalities are a 59-year-old male from St. Catherine who died in March of 2021, a 32-year-old female from Westmoreland, a 51-year-old female who died in August of 2021, a 72-year-old female from St. Catherine who died in August of 2021, an 81-year-old female from St. Catherine who died in September of 2021. And as we continue with the news tonight, Sagicor Group Jamaica reported net profit attributable to stockholders of $3.82 billion, a 31% increase over the previous year. Sagicor's president and the chief executive officer, Christopher Zaka, said the individual life insurance segment performed extremely well, while the employee benefits segment showed strong recovery. Sajikor Group Jamaica in Q1 2022 recorded a profit attributable to shareholders of $3.82 billion, and that's 31% higher than Q1 last year in 2021. So it's a great performance. Our revenues were $23.76 billion, and that was slightly up over our Q1 last year. So overall, it's a great performance. Our in individual life segment was really the star. It was 80%, 89% above last year. Our employee benefits division um, is re rebounding and had a creditable performance in the quarter. Sajikor Bank continues to perform well also. So overall, it's a good quarter, a great quarter in my view, and a lot of credit to the team. That now, on April 4, 2022, the group commenced operations of Alliance Financial Services Limited, having obtained the relevant licenses for Cambio and remittance services. Mr. Zaka explained that the acquisition represents a move into a new business segment and affords the group an opportunity to expand its product offerings to our customers. Financial Services was acquired and started operating once again on April 4th. Um, so far it has done well. The, the numbers are creditable. They are beyond our expectation in the short period that we've been operating. There's a lot of support out there in the field by the communities, etc. So we're very excited about it. Also, the Alliance Network Islandwide of Sub-Agents allows us an opportunity going forward in the future to use that island-wide network to distribute more and more of our products and services um, throughout the length and breadth of Jamaica. So it's going to be a big addition to our strategy. Mr. Zaka, in commending the company for the great performance, urged persons to take care of themselves as COVID is still with us.
So it's no surprise that health costs have gone up significantly. And our strategy around that is to manage our, our own costs, push our revenues, and gain market share, but in a profitable way. And we are rebounding. Our health insurance division is doing better than it did last year. And I'm very happy with the progress we have made in that area. I need to remind Jamaicans that COVID is not over and we still need to be safe. We need to do whatever we can to, to protect ourselves against COVID. And part of that, as it is with a part of everything in, in our lives, is to eat healthier and to exercise more. And, you know, the Minister of Health has been saying a lot about that and we support that 100%. Continuing with the news tonight, Cabinet has approved the strategic framework for electric mobility, which will guide the introduction of electric vehicles, EVs, in Jamaica. Minister of Science, Energy and Technology, Daryl Vaz, made the disclosure during his contribution to the 2022-23 to sectoral debate in the House of Representatives yesterday. Now, he added that the manufacturers of these electric vehicles will not consider Jamaica or any other country until a policy has been tabled. Mr. Vaz further noted that the government is doing its part in ensuring the development of a thriving electromobility environment, adding that the Electric Vehicle Council has been established. Now, the council will give oversight and review any policies, legislation and regulations related to the deployment of EVs in Jamaica and comment and provide feedback on matters relating to safety and sustainability of EV technologies contemplated for the country. And those are the stories making news. We now take a break and then join Christopher Scott with the latest in sports. <laughs> 